Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and I am joined by. Hey, this is Postal Monkey. And Avalation. So, recently a viewer gave a suggestion that it would be nice to see, like, a tech tree showcase of a particular line of aircraft. Maybe not the nationality but in particular, but, like, a total aircraft line run from, say, the P-12 all the way down to the F-86 Sabre, highlighting the American Altitude Fighters. And that's exactly what we're going to do today, because as I was thinking about it, I thought it made a lot more sense to bring in two other content contributors that can bring something to the table besides just my own perspective. So, Postal and Avalation are joining me today, and hopefully all three of us will be able to post this video together so that way you can see it on our channels. So, just to start out, I think we gotta start with the P-12, just because that's the intro to all the American fighters, even though it's only a multi-role compared to the traditional fighters. So, any thoughts, guys, on the P-12, the American Tier 1? Uh, it's been a hot minute since I've hopped in the, the P-12, but I do like, at the lower tiers, the multi-rolls tend to be... Um, a little bit more flexible since they've got the maneuverability of a lot of the fighters. Um, so if I was going to be keeping a tier one, I would keep a multi-roll, and you know this is a solid all-around play in this tier. Avalation. I would, yeah, I would uh, tend to agree. Uh, I don't have a huge um, experience to draw on with that plane simply because I tend to prefer sort of tier four and up. But um, right. It's, it's hard, it, I feel like the, if you want to call it the Mustang line, it, it's not really apparent in, uh, in tier one as much. It, it really starts to come in, uh, tier three and four. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard to, uh, distinguish it from its peers, I feel. I'm gonna have to agree. I, I think while it's important to say that this P-12 exists and you're gonna start here, all these lower tier kind of biplane aircraft are really just kind of intro to how to play the game. And I think almost all of them right. pretty much play the same. I mean, I did a quick run through of all the other tier ones and they all get some type of air to ground ordinance just to give you that feel. And with biplanes, right. I think like you said, like these lower tier aircraft, they all tend to have really interesting stall characteristics that makes them more maneuverable in their own right just to kind of make the game a little bit easier so you can get the basics. Yeah, more so. accessible to start with. Yeah, absolutely. So let's call the P-12 done <laughs> just because there isn't much to say. And we're probably yeah, not going to sure. spend a lot of time on these early tiers, but uh, P-23... Uh, if I remember the P-23 correctly, it felt fast to me when I was playing uh, early tiers, like, and I thought it looked pretty sleek for a biplane. So I gotta say, if, uh, if you don't mind me jumping in here, this yeah. is the only um, the only non-premium tier 2 I've actually kept in the game. Um, I kept it because I thought it was a really good all-arounder at Tier 2, and I didn't know at the time that I'd actually be, um, you know, so into the game as I am. Um, it's... I've done... I've looked into it quite a bit. It's not the the most maneuverable. It doesn't have the best altitude performance. Its guns are right in line with everything else at, at Tier 2. So it's kind of similar to the Tier 1 um, in that regard, but it is really well balanced, and, and you can get good speed for a Tier 2 out of it. And sure. it's um, it's just a fun little plane. It's not overpowered by any means, but I'm not really sure there's a whole lot of overpowered tier two planes in the game. No, it's definitely uh, one of the faster tier twos, and that's really the first step towards this line uh, distinguishing itself from the others. I, I also like that it doesn't seem like much. Like you look at the guns and you're like, okay, it's got two machine guns, but uh, set, uh, a 50 cal machine gun is actually quite powerful at these lower tiers, especially mm -hmm. with just that little bit more reach. And it kind of brings yep. the P23 up into like that next echelon. So 
And again, with the biplane, it shares a lot of those same stall characteristics. So while it's not as maneuverable as your Japanese counterparts, you can get them into a stall climb and kick that rudder over pretty well with these things. So Exactly, yep. All right, moving on to the Hawk 75. And the first thing that appears to me when I look at the Hawk 75M just in the tech tree is the sheer volume of firepower on this thing like even with the first upgrade you're looking at at a total of six machine guns and one of those can be upgraded to a 50 kill that's just a lot of firepower and i feel like that kind of it I, it almost gives people a false sense of firepower as you continue down the mustang line yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt um, the the Hawk 75, like, because I went back and played uh, a bunch of these planes, of course, and the Hawk 75 is the first one that I um, was able to feel sort of comfortable in, um, you know, compared to playing some of the higher tiers. It's a bit more familiar, it's got a bit more speed, um, and, you know, the, the distinct characteristics are starting to play out a little bit more in Tier 3. Um, yeah, this is where you see a, a pretty significant drop off on maneuverability, um, but you also see a, a, a decent bump up in airspeed and, and altitude performance. I'd, yeah. I'm glad you pointed it out. The I didn't, didn't really. It's been a while since I played the 75M. I actually forgot about how many guns this this plane had until you were re mentioning it. Um, and I was like, yeah, I remember when I when I was going down this line and going from the P23, which you know had three guns and it was perfectly adequate and going to this plane that had a plethora of guns for the tier I was just like man I can melt everything down as long as I can you know keep them in target I'm actually I'm noticing it now to the climb rate while it's not stellar by any means compared to higher tiers the climb rate on these aircraft is pretty good 282 feet per second uh, if you're working in standard measurements but uh, yeah, that thing, it really does have um, good climb rate, even though it's not, you know, high tier climb rate. I think that that's going to kind of showcase the acceleration and the ability to get itself out of trouble. So, Evolution, I've got a quick question for you, since you've actually played this plane relatively recently. Um, mm. Would you keep this plane if you, just as a tier 3? Yeah, out? absolutely. Um, I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, and... I was just playing a lot of the tier 4 P36 and I sort of enjoyed, uh, especially as a non-spec plane in tier 3 and uh, you're n because you're not getting thrust up into the uh, tier 5 battles, mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a much more viable option. Whereas when you hop into that P36 and now you've got to deal with the tier 5 guys, uh, it's a lot tougher. So. I felt I really felt a bit of a step there between those two. It's good to know. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, onto the P thirty six. Now that you've mentioned it, uh, the P thirty six also still gets uh, six machine guns, but two of those are going to be fifty cal's now. And we've already mentioned how fifty cal's were really powerful at tier two, but it's becoming more the the standard as you start to hit tier four and five. So those 7.62s are starting to fall out of favor, but yeah. it does have uh, some much more of an increase in altitude performance. So this is getting you into that echelon of what you should be expecting, I think, for a majority of the Mustang line. Yeah. And personally, I remember when I was going down down this line, the P36 was the one that I remember, like as we were talking about um, doing this discussion, it was the one I remember being the step to um, like learning how to play the Mustang line. I remember it being a higher altitude than um, than a lot of the other planes that are out there. Yep. Pretty good speed, um, mediocre maneuverability, and yep. uh, yeah, just a, a a gray area in front of you when you're firing all your machine guns. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I remember this one being that, that like good segue from the the lower tiers to the higher tiers. Not as yeah. far as like. Um, at the time, I didn't realize it uh, when I was first playing the game, but, you know, Tier 4 is it can be kind of a beast tier. If you get stuck in those Tier 5 matches that have the um, upgraded bots, and, and um, so I remember it was kind of 
it wasn't like um I guess what I'm trying to say is it could it could be a struggle in this plane just because when you get into a tier five match it's it can be outclassed a little bit. Um, but I yep. remember it, it setting you up for the future pretty well. Um, the thing I really noticed, especially going from uh, the Hawk to the 36, was that you're no longer uh, on an even keel with the dogfighting. You now really have to rely on your altitude and your speed and capitalize and do your dives and and just bug out. You can't you can't get into turn fights with the zeros or any <laughs> anything. And uh, the BF 109s will out turn you as well. So they really, um, yeah, you really got to use that speed and, and altitude performance. And uh, I actually just spent uh, like, I don't know, almost 10 uh, goes in a row on the P36, uh, really trying to um, sort of tap into it and figure out what's going on with it. Um, and, uh, oh, what was I going to say now? <laughs> Well, while you're trying to sink that in, I'm going to I'm gonna interject, I guess. Uh, I'm glad you brought up maneuvering with a 109, because yeah. at this tier, the Russians don't quite have their altitude fighter yet. That's not until tier 5. But you are going up against BF 109s, and yes. arguably the, uh, is it the Heinkel 112. So you're looking at aircraft that yep. sport cannons now, at a pretty low tier, and that can be pretty devastating as well. Yeah. And yep. I don't. I think um, it goes without saying that the 109 is a hard counter in a lot of ways to the Mustang line. So it's it's where you start to get that feel for what you can expect for the rest of the time that you're grinding this line. Yeah. Uh, what I was trying to say was that uh, what I really wanted to do with the P36 was get it to spec, uh, so that I could just chuck on those extra um, engine uh, mods um, because I feel like it's a plane that doesn't really come into its own until it's got that extra advantage. Um, it's got a really high speed, top speed, um, that you're just it not going to hit until, until you uh, do those mods and, and get the extra boost and stuff because you've only got eight seconds of boost. Um, I, d I don't think I even... Like you, you've got to do a, a full dive with full boost to get to the top speed in that plane. Like it's, uh, yeah, it really needs uh, a bit of extra help. But once it gets it, it really does become very distinct from its peers. Yeah, it is. Um, it is unfortunately kind of the lesser of the uh, between the, this and the BF 109B. I think there's a lot of the, as we go down the tiers, there's a lot of times we, we're going to be able to say, well, you know, the, the American line in this particular tier has such and such better performance. Um, I really do think that at this particular tier, the P-36 is, is pretty well lacking behind the BF-109 on the opposite side. It doesn't have the, even even fully spec'd out, it's not quite there at the BF-109 speed. Um, it's got a less maneuverability, its altitude performance is less. So I think this, although um, you're exactly right, Evolution, that you know, this plane sets you up for, for the future rest of the line. If you can do well in the P-36, basically, you're going to do really well um, all the way up to at least Tier 8 on this line. Uh, yeah. But like as far as a keeper is concerned, I'm not sure I'd, uh, this would be a, a plane that I would be keeping if I was having to keep a Tier 4 fighter. This probably wouldn't be it. So what I think is kind of funny is how much more time we spent on this particular aircraft compared to the other previous ones. But it makes sense because this is the first time where you see 109s pop up and you start seeing cannon fighters, the counters come up to it. And I think it is an this is kind of that moment where you're like, hey, the rest of this line is going to feel underpowered gun-wise, and that's why the American Mustang line, uh, a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with it. Either you yeah. really love them, or you absolutely hate having machine guns while everybody else gets cannons. Yeah. 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 yeah you're really going to notice that difference in Tier 5. It, it comes down to Ooh, whether segue. or not you like them. But... Yeah, that's a good segue. Let's so so tier five. I I don't think I've run into anybody who didn't like the P40. 
just because the P-40 is a very iconic aircraft, you know, flying tigers and all that. Um, and you are getting the full 650 cal machine gun setup, which again, it doesn't seem like much initially until you start using it. And at tier five, it's fairly powerful. And you start to see that speed Avalation was talking about that you wanted from the P-36. I feel like the P-40 can hold it. Yep. Uh, I, uh, as you guys probably know, that um, I actually jumped onto the P-40 M105 uh, a lot more. <laughs> like, when I, when I had to make my decision of do I keep the P-40 or not, I just thought to myself, well, I've already got an M105, why do I need the P-40? So, uh, coming back and having a look at the P-40 um, was interesting. It, uh, it was cha challenging. I th it was more challenging than, uh, than I was expecting, actually. How so? Uh, well, uh, I think, again, the, the thing that really helps the M105 is the fact that I've specced it to the limit. And once you get that little edge there that is when the plane can really do its thing mm -hmm. um, and go going back to a p40 um, which was stock um, it, it you, you feel like you've been dropped down a rung for sure um, and uh, short of swapping in a, an experienced pilot um, it was more challenging uh, to kind of get get the hang of but well, um, this uh, is where like uh, sorry to interrupt, but this is where we were talking on the P-36 was kind of um, almost basically underpowered compared to some of its counterparts. This is the first plane in the line that I feel that um, starts to separate itself when it comes to airspeed. It's not like ridiculously yeah. faster than the MiG-3 or the BF-109E, but it's just fast enough and it, it teaches you, or it taught me anyway, if I'm able to maintain my airspeed, this plane can do wonders, um, and those those 650 cals. Although, like, okay, we're used to playing higher tier planes. 650 cals at this tier can actually do quite a bit of damage, yes. and it's a widespread. Um, if you, I put universal ammunition on on my 50 cal planes, and you're yep. pretty good at starting fires in that regard. So, if you're, this plane really teaches you uh, boom and zoom. Kind of, I mean, not that you're doing a lot of boom, but you're doing a lot of zoom. Uh, and because it's really the strength of this this particular plane, and I feel like it's the strength of this particular line. Yeah, I I feel like with that speed and those machine guns, if you use the speed to get close, which you can, especially if you start high, and mm -hmm. and attack from there, it's easy to get close, and that is where those machine guns are really going to do their work. See, I, I like this because um, all I have to do is intro an aircraft and then I got you guys for the rest of the recording. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. But yeah, I 100% agree. It doesn't have, I, I recently bought this back based on requests from a viewer and did another review on it. But yeah, if you don't hold your speed, you really feel it because it has an edge, but it yeah. doesn't have much of an edge. And if there's a 109E that wants to get you and you're caught out, yeah. you are hard caught out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With that, let's go to the P-51A because I think this is where people kind of make their decision as to whether or not they're going to keep down the line because the P-51 is clearly a very iconic aircraft. Won't get to say the cat's meow. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you mind if I put my cat up real quick? No, go right ahead. So the P-51's actually got weaker guns than the P-40. Slightly. So you, you... Sorry about that, guys. No, it's fine. That's all right. So the P-51A, uh, you lose two of the 50 kills, but right. you start upgrading to arguably better 50 kills, uh, but there's still only yep. four of them, and you essentially end up having the same firepower as a P-40, but with less volume. So that can make uh -huh. it feel more inaccurate. You start to see that airspeed start to come into its own a little bit more. But now you're facing that, you're really starting to feel that 
firepower disparity and that's where i think it starts to become a bit of an issue right that's when you have to really decide whether or not you're going to stick with it and i think people who like american iconic american fighters a lot of it is just historical nostalgia that you want to fly a mustang so you Mm -hmm. stick with it um i think it pays off later on but this is really kind of going to be your trial by fire because the p40 felt so strong And now you're hopping into this and it almost feels like you're you're getting out tiered firepower wise so you have to rely on the airframes capabilities over just the guns yeah well, and the 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 thing with the the plane itself is yeah it's got better airspeed than the i210 or the bf 109 f but that's after you get the fully upgraded engine you got to go through three other engines to get that that uh, top engine on the P-51A, so it's like you start off kind of on the weak side. Well, not even kind of. You start off just weaker, and it takes you a little while longer to get to where you want it to be, to be right. uh, where it should be competitive with. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tough hill to climb. The nice thing, however, is that you are unlocking in the P-51A the second engine in the P-51D so you're getting that chance to kind of get ahead on the next airframe even though it's going to be a labor of love to get there and I do fully advocate fully upgrading any line that you're grinding just because you're not getting the full impression of the aircraft Uh, otherwise if you're just going to say I'm going to skip that last engine because I want to get to the P-51D I think you're going to have a much tougher slog, and I think that's good advice across the board for most aircraft. You guys had the same impression? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Yeah. definitely, Um, because I I figure if I'm grinding a full line, um, and and you mentioned it, you know, the P-51D is going to use the top engine on the P-51A, it's going to make the P-51D grind that much easier. and very often some of the engines and some of the guns especially on the American and German lines tend to crisscross so if you get you don't want to skip all those different things just because it's going to help you out in the future I like making it easier in the future (laughs) speaking of the future let's talk about the P-51D at tier 7 I also recently repurchased this based on a request and it was it somebody wrote in the comments i think it actually was uh, prince of hyrule or sergeant slaughter he said why'd you get the worst mustang there in the game <laughs> and Man, yeah it, that is harsh that's a harsh the firepower goes up but arguably it's where the a probably should have been so you still feel underpowered and the airspeed management becomes even more important just because yes. you're going up against, you know, you're you're starting to go up against uh, more altitude fighters. Because arguably the Japanese Tier 7, the uh, Key Series, what is that, the 61? That's considered, like, what, the most powerful fighter at Tier 7 just because of the altitude it starts to get. So you can find yourself running into a lot more nasty aircraft. Well, I could name, um, I mean, I wouldn't have necessarily gone as far as um, as Hyrule went, Schlaughter, um, <laughs> but it is, it is, it's just a weak uh, tier 7 plane, unfortunately, in my opinion. The, the airspeed that you um, can rely on at tier 6 and tier 5 to kind of save you, and even at tier 8 and, and above, it's kind of lacking for this tier. Um, you know, the, the BF-109, the I-220, um, all have at least the same airspeed, if not better, than the P-51D. And if, you're, if your strength on a plane is still is only just as good as some strengths uh, on other planes, and they've got better guns or they've got better maneuverability, then, then where is your plane at kind of situation. So I could, I could understand that, that sentiment. Yeah. Um, See, I must be one of these uh, romantic <laughs> Mustang lovers <laughs> because I have all the Mustangs. Uh, I respect them all, and I enjoy flying them perhaps more than most uh, fighters at their tier. Um, the thing that I think 
people tend to concentrate on the dog fighting, right? The mm -hmm. competition that you've got, the high altitude with the fighters and the mid altitude with the Spitfires. Um, but the thing that no one talks about is how great they are at taking out heavies and bombers, especially before sort of tier seven, eight, where the bombers get uh, much better <laughs> defenses. Yeah. Um, they're, they're fantastic at, um, at doing that. They've got the speed for uh, getting around and controlling the battle in a way that, you know, you might not be dogfighting everyone, but you're knocking out bombers, you're knocking out heavies, and you are picking off the odd Spitfire that is, uh, you know, turning around and going too slow. Like, if you fly it high, uh, you just have an advantage that a lot of the other planes don't. So you say spec it out and i'm looking at this my mine in the hangar and looking at what's currently locked without it being specialized i have the opportunity to get an airframe upgrade an extra engine upgrade i get a consumable for the airframe and an extra consumable for the engine that's a lot of stuff to unlock with specialization like you're talking about four slots not like the piddly one or two you might get in yeah. tiers before so this becomes one that if you want to put the effort into it i think it can become a really yeah. strong aircraft like you mentioned and it's it yeah. it's where it starts to become more worth it in my opinion to specialize these aircraft because yeah. you're going to get so much more for the bang for the buck and sorry i know i know i'm kind of stopping postal but uh i want to mention this the a great example of why you need to upgrade the p51 alpha because if you guys looked at the tech tree real quick you'll mm -hmm. note that if you upgrade the airframe if you've already unlocked those MG 53-2 guns on the P-51A, you essentially get like a free upgrade when you get to this plane. If you can get the airframe upgraded, you automatically get not only an extra two machine guns, but you're also getting the next grade of machine gun. Otherwise, the stock grind on this looks like it's a real bear. Yeah, and that just kind of reinforces the need, or maybe not the need, the recommendation to fully upgrade a plane uh, before you get to the next level, especially from like tier 5 and up, where the next tier up you're going to be spending a decent amount of time on. You might as well make the grind on the next tier up that much better. Um, what I was going to mention is um, something that, that I don't think we've mentioned yet, is although the uh, I was mentioning about the the speed for the P-51D was not, you know, anything to, um, you know, anything that we need to put a gold star on or anything like that. The way that the Mustang line maintains its speed, um, I think, and, and there's no stat on this, but when I played this line, I specifically remember how easily I was able to keep my uh, momentum, how, e how easily I was able to keep my top speed, even if I was just leveled off. Whereas in a, uh, the 109s or the... Um, the MIG line, uh, the Japanese lines for sure, they tended to kind of bleed speed a little bit where the yeah. Mustangs just kind of just cruised. And so I think that's, you know, it's not in the metrics. You're not going to see that anywhere on the tech tree or anything right. like that. But, um, you it's know, I remember, I remember just being able to stick. Oh, yeah, you'd be able to, because you mentioned it, Evolution, like getting bombers and getting heavies, and it, like, clicked. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You can stick with heavies. Especially yeah. if they like use their boost or something like that, you're like, you know, you're rubbing your hands together and going, "Oh, you yeah. sucker! Yeah. I got and you." If, you've, if you've got them in a turn, the yep. tail gun is probably not even going to get a look at you anyway. So, all you've got is a big broadside of two big wings to shoot at, which is nice and easy. Well, if they even got a tail gunner at this tier, a lot of the tail gunners tend right. to, to drop off, um, except in the bombers, of course. But that that speed momentum, that ability to maintain speed on the Mustang line, I think um, is something that isn't really talked about. And I think it makes this line, um, especially at this tier in tier six, it's what separates this uh, this speed fighter from like the 109 and the I-220 and things like that. It also yep. has a really strong climb rate available to it. This is, the Mustangs yep. have really good climb mm -hmm. rate capabilities yep. and, and that is adds to that versatility. Um, yeah, I, I remember there was a time the H chased one of my jet fighters up to like nearly <laughs> 10,000 feet and I'm like, yeah. what is killing me? And the H just did not care. Uh, Doesn't quit. No. So is that a segue? 
I was trying to. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> well, because so you mentioned that, and when I first got the H, um, that is the the first thing I recognized on it. Back, this was back before the pancake got nerfed. This is when you run into those two six twos, and you're like, "What in the hell is going on?" Um, but the P fifty one H could stick with those planes. Um, I was not afraid of a of an unnerfed pancake because I knew that I could. Um, stick with it. Uh, it wouldn't like boom and zoom me. No, no, no. And and that's um, that ability to maintain speed and ability to climb, ridiculous. Um, I think yeah. is under underappreciated on this Mustang line. Absolutely. Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me. I went to say something and then it's just shot through. Uh, so uh, I, I did want to say that um, the the P fifty one H tends to be kind of split in the community. I was talking with some people on the forum, and there's some people that you know they like it, and then there's a lot of people that say that it's underpowered, that it it needs a buff. Um, I don't think that this the the H needs a buff. I think. I think it just needs to be played in the way yeah. it needs to be played to its strengths is really what it comes down to to me. Yeah, I'd agree. I think it's easy to look at these um, light fighters and assume that they're going to be great turn fighters, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, and the P51H is, of course, the king of all the Mustangs, and uh, it it can hold its own in in a tier eight tier eight battle. No worries. So I distinctly remember when I went down this line initially, I just slogged it. Like I went through and I just was having a ha heck of a time. I just was like tier after tier. I'm like, just get me to the next plane. Just get me to the next plane. I want to <laughs> get, I want to get the F-86 Saber. Right. So I was just like, I was just doing it to do it. And I, I honestly hated him until I got to the H and i started to recognize the speed and it started to all click together and this is when i learned how to fly an altitude fighter was in this aircraft yeah. i started mm -hmm. i started paying attention to my airspeed i started paying attention to my altitude and when i did that it made the previous ones easier to fly when i went back to them and yeah. And I actually, when I sold the H, by the time I got done grinding and I sold the H in order to have the credits for the FJ1, it was like a hesitation of like, oh, you treated me well, click. Like, I, <laughs> I, I didn't want to let it go. And I still, a yeah. part of me really wants to buy it back, but, you know, you know, credits and time, right? But it was, <laughs> it was, it was a great plane and it felt really good once you, once you had that moment. And maybe it's just nostalgia for me, but it is the king of the Mustang line and it just feels more powerful. And like I said, I got chased down in a jet fighter by this thing because mm -hmm. the top airspeed on this thing is just crazy. You're getting up in the upper 400s, maybe yep. even the low 500s, just mm -hmm. yep. zipping around and the altitude performance is so strong. Um, yep. Speaking of, of jet fighters, uh, let's first go to the Fury, but we're eventually gonna talk about the F6U. So for the Fury, I I called this thing my rocket ship because when I first yeah, okay. got it, and when I got into battles, the first thing I do with an altitude aircraft is I put my nose up and I climb up to my altitude <laughs> yeah. bracket because yep. I don't want to accidentally be too low because I see altitude as potential energy because you can always drop and get some yes. airspeed. So get it early yep. while you know you're safe at the spawn and then go to where you're going to need to go and let that boost build back up. So I would kick the nose straight up like 90 degrees hammer the boost yeah. and with the climb rate this thing had i would get up to my what is it like nine uh, eight and a half thousand feet just whoo, straight up level off the plane and i'd still have a ton of speed because like postal said this line t tends to hold its airspeed and i would just zip to the next target and this is the first time you start to feel the aircraft's maneuverability get so much better because it it changes right this is when your altitude fighter like the american line starts to become less of a boom and zoom even though it can do it it's more of a altitude dogfighter yeah 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 it's a much better all-rounder and it doesn't yeah, hurt that you get the top tier guns <laughs> well 
And so, I mean, that's, you know, that's what everybody, anybody that doesn't like this plane or the, the P-51H or the Sabre at Tier 10 doesn't like it because you've still got the same 50 cals. I mean, they're not the same that you've had the whole line, but they're basically the same that you've had the whole line. They've yeah. got a little bit more range and a little bit more damage. And so people mm -hmm. are like, well, where the hell's my, you know, 37 mil on a MIG? Or where's my 420 mils on, on the 1092? Where's my oomph? Um, and I don't think they recognize that look, if your guns aren't getting better, everything else on the plane is getting better. Your airspeed is, you're, you're right. fast as heck, right? Your maneuverability yeah. for an altitude fighter is ridiculous. You can outturn anything that's, if, if you're playing to your altitude, you can outturn anything. You're basically the yak of 10,000 feet. Yes. Um, and, and then your altitude performance is actually higher than every other fighter at this tier. Um, you're higher than the MIG. You're higher than that 1092. So you can determine the engagement. And I, I think people miss that from time to time when they're talking about right. the FJ-1. Yeah. it's. The, I was just thinking before how I think that they've got this line right. It's, it's just not a beginner line. Like, the Spitfire is a great beginner line. This one... You, you can't do those turn the, the turn fights the way that you expect. You do have mm -hmm. to learn to manage your energy, um, and yeah, it's. I was I was just looking uh, at the stats compared from my 51H to the FJ1. Um, I don't have the Fury as spec'd out as I do the Mustang, uh, but the airspeed on the Mustang is actually superior <laughs> to that of the Fury <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Specialization for the win. It, they say that yeah. specialization adds about a tier to a tier and a half, depending on equipment. So you might as yeah. well be in a 9.5 with your P51H, which is an awesome thing <laughs> to think about. Yeah, um, yeah it, and I was actually just thinking about that as well. Like the the barrier for entry for this line is this is not your beginner line. This is this is something you do after you've done like your Spitfire line or even a BF109 line, yeah. which is obviously more forgiving and more consistent. And then yes. you come over here because of the nostalgia. But so many people want a Mustang. So many people mm -hmm. want the F-86 because of what it was and what it represented in World War II. Like in World War II, the P-51H is what allowed the bombing campaigns to get to where they needed to be in Europe. So that's the thing everybody thinks of. It's the fastest aircraft. It's the one that got close to breaking the sound barrier, but they didn't realize it in level flight when it started getting the buffeting. The F-86 Sabre was the, the king of Korea with the first like jet dogfight engagements so people want those based on that idea that concept but yeah. if you can't get past the game characteristics like the flight characteristics you're gonna hate the rest of the line and i think that's where it gets its bad name from and, and it, it does feel like you're tickling people to death a lot of the time <laughs> it death yeah. by a thousand paper cuts is how i um how i think of it yeah. um, and you both touched on it a little bit um i just want to reinforce it like this line the reason it gets a bad rap is because it's not forgiving. Um, the Spitfire, you can make mistakes in a Spitfire and you can overcome those mistakes. Even a BF-109, once you've learned you know, the basic mechanics of the game. Um, but this line, if you make a mistake, it's, it's typically um, fatal. Um, you know, because you've either, you've, your engagement, you're not at a high enough speed, or yeah. you're trying to outturn something that you can't outturn. The FJ-1, yeah. um, you know, has a little bit of flexibility when it comes to maneuverability, but um, its mistakes on this line are, are punished a lot harder than they are on uh, some of the other fighter lines. That yeah, is for sure. For sure. So uh, to completely divert, uh, just because we're kind of on like the this track of the FJ-1, and I think the F-86 falls very close to the FJ-1, but uh, now that they've reorganized the tech tree, uh, Posa, let's talk a little bit about your uh, one of your favorite aircraft in the game, just because it's it changes. It's the other American fighter that, for the longest time, was the one that was ignored because it was a choice between this and the F-94D back in the old mm -hmm. tech tree. And mm -hmm. it's an easy choice. The F-94T gets a <laughs> F-94D gets a Vulcan. Like who doesn't want a Vulcan in air-to-air -air rockets? But the exactly. F-6U Pirate now arguably in the right place in the tech tree. And an, an easy entry to 
jot over into the American Heavy Fire line, which is a great line to go down. The F6U trades the maneuverability for increased burst speed and a set of uh, tier 10 20 millimeter cannons. So you get your your cannon flavors. So this is be an opportunity at the P51H if you've decided I don't like this line, you can jot over to this aircraft and easily access the heavy fighter line. Like this is a nice exit route or it's just a nice ability to get ahead on another tech tree. And the F6U I think was an underloved aircraft by a lot of people because of the F94D option, but mm -hmm. I found that once you got this thing kind of synced up, even though it doesn't have the best altitude performance, it's pretty good. And the acceleration, the overall airspeed, the ability to hold yeah. that airspeed, and having a, a monster amount of firepower. This has the same guns as the F2H Banshee, its same tier counterpart heavy fighter, but it has more maneuverability and about the same airspeed. And it's just a real beast once you, once you start to understand that boom and zoom tactic. So it does kind of bring over a little bit of the flavor of the previous aircraft but it definitely is not meant to maneuver, not meant to maneuver at all. No. Yeah, and if no. you keep that, that mentality of um, the inability to maneuver, and because as you're going down the, the, the Mustang line, you're getting a little bit more maneuverability, a little bit more maneuverability. The F6U throws that all out the window for like a ridiculous amount of airspeed. I mean, I got this back in the day when it was available on the multi-roll um, tech tree, and I, the only reason I got it, honestly, was because there was, I think it was March Nations or something like that, where it was on discount, and I was like, well, I might as well get it because it's cheaper, and I'm a cheapy. <laughs> um, and I got it, and I just absolutely fell in love with it, it so quickly. I was like, wait a minute. I played a few games, and I'm like, wait a minute, something's wrong. Well, I guess it's probably just like noob um, kind of games, you know, you figure few, first few games, but you're you're right. It's It's basically a rocket with some wings. It goes so fast, and you can't play it like a fighter though um, i think people look at that little symbol and they say okay it's a fighter it's really it's really just a heavy fighter assassin um and you dive down on on uh, multi-rolls and fighters it can take out bombers and and ground attack planes very quickly because uh, those guns that that you mentioned v are so strong they're the same guns as a heavy fighter so um this plane, I just absolutely love it. I'll never get rid of this thing. Um, it's not like the Mustangs, but it's it's an, been an absolute joy for me to play, for sure. It's it's got almost double the damage output there for the FJ1. Yep. Um, one thing I will say about the Mustang and the uh, the Saber guns is that you can keep that trigger held down two to three, four times longer than any other. <laughs> plane like that is actually a pretty good uh, feature sometimes when your aim is not so great but you can just keep peppering away and you don't have to worry about the guns overheating so it's it's you bring up yeah. a good point we haven't mentioned that at all and I, I think that's um, yeah I think honestly you saying two to three to four times probably is an understatement I've been able to hold the yeah. you know just hold it down for like 60 seconds straight and you're like oh yeah, man yeah. I, I overheated. Wow, I didn't even know that could let me no, trigger here. Could do that, yeah. I've um, managed to wipe out sort yeah. of two targets without stopping shooting. You know, it's and they cool off pretty quick too, which is nice. They do. With this F6, you you overheat those cannons and you you feel it like you gotta wait, and you're like, all right, I'll come back in a minute. So. Yeah, but the F6U, I think it was important to mention that this does exist, it does come off the tech tree, and it is a really nice way to hop into the top tier American heavy fighters if you are interested in doing that. So it might be worth your time to spend a bit of effort in the P-51H in order to get over here. Uh, with that said, let's let's go to the F-86 Sabre, the culmination of this line, something that I'm sure dun, dun, everybody, dun, dun. everybody when they start a line, they look at the aircraft in the line, but they immediately go to the tier 10 and they go, who, what am I going to get at the end if I actually put the effort in? And this is the aircraft. This 
this is the the king of high altitude dogfighting. It is really good maneuverability. The one I have isn't even specialized, but with a 9.4 second turn time and with my configuration, that's going to outturn every other altitude fighter that's out there. Uh, obviously, if they've specialized and gone crazy with it, you know, I can get outturned by other aircraft, but it it is a nasty aircraft with some really good roll characteristics and really good airspeed as well. It's not it's not the best, but it's pretty dang good. And it feels like it's as people say, I wish we could have the one with the 20 millimeter cannons because there is an F-86 with 20s. That would be overpowered. That would be unfair. This this I feel is balanced. Thoughts? Um, yeah, you, yeah. For the game, you're right. The, if this had 20 mil cannons, it would be an MEP 1101 um, that can outmaneuver everything and <laughs> go faster and have higher altitude performance. So, you know, it would it would just be overpowered. It needs it honestly needs the 50 cals on this, or else you would just uh, literally own everything. Yes, it's it's nuts, and and. If you're moving your pilot forward, I didn't even have the, my full pilot on here. I've got like a 15 point pilot on this guy and the maneuverability drops down Jeez. to 9.1. <laughs> and that's not specialized. And that's not specialized. Yeah. yeah. And you put on pneumatic control assist like we've been doing lately. And now you've got an aircraft that could theoretically cause some serious problems with your LA-15s and stuff like that. Because we thought the LA-15 was really maneuverable with a what is that a 9.6 turn time <laughs> yeah and this f86 can actually bring it to bear and we talked about the guns if you can find an aircraft that is in a bad energy state that's stalled out or is just stationary with a wide cross section a light fighter you can eliminate in a single pass with these guns yeah, it's totally yeah. possible. Once you get it synced in and you know what you're doing, uh, I like to personally, if I'm trailing on somebody that's engaging another target, I don't fire as soon as the numbers turn red. I wait till I get to about a thousand feet or what would probably be about 300 meters. Once you get yep. to that range and you unload, now you're ensuring more of those, more of those shells hit and you're going to tear things apart before they can react because if you got to tickle somebody to death you might as well get in there so you can ensure that you're getting the full damage potential early on because once they start maneuvering then it becomes more of a slog yeah it, yeah get oops sorry uh, i was just going to say uh, like you say viva it um they really can pack a punch as you go close range and if you combine that with your altitude and the crazy bonus that you get from diving uh, not only in speed, but actual uh, damage output as well. Um, if you combine all that, you can definitely knock something out in, in one pass. Yeah, one thing that I think is under... Um, I was going to say under-talked about, but that's not even a phrase. Um, something that isn't talked about is the actual speed of this plane. Granted, the cruise speed isn't anything special. Um, you know, the MiG-15, things like the Swift, of course, are going to out, um, outpace it. But its boost speed um, has the ability to get up there significant like higher than the swift in the, the mid 15. so that means that you can go from you know zero to 100 so to speak uh really really quickly um and sometimes when you're you need to be mindful of that when you are trying to get on target to somebody there's been a handful of times where i go zipping by somebody because because i'm just going so freaking fast so this plane can do that um and kind of like the the fj1 before it you know, the guns aren't the metrics on the guns aren't getting any better, so that means everything else is getting that much better. If your guns aren't um, jumping up in performance, the airspeed, the maneuverability, the altitude performance, all of that is going to be compensated by having the same guns. And to me, I actually appreciated that because I was like, well, I know how to use these guns. I've used them the whole freaking line. Now I'm going from something that was you know, very quick in the Mustangs, I'm still maintaining that speed but now i've got this maneuverability that i wasn't relying on before now yep. i can utilize that and it just makes this plane feel so strong if yep. you if you succeeded with the mustangs you're gonna absolutely love the saber yeah absolutely so i i think it's it's interesting to mention this because the i think the undisputed number one 
altitude fighter and, and most of people's opinion is going to be your germans right the either the 1092 or the 1101 like the 1101 for tier 10 because mm -hmm. it has what is it 800 damage uh cumulative damage which allows it to to really be able to burst down things uh, mm -hmm. but those guns overheat really quick and the airframe isn't nearly as nimble as the F-86. We've already mentioned how the airframes on this line are really what bring it into its own. So I think a skilled F-86 pilot can give an 1101 or, or even the FJ-1 pilot can give a 1092 a really good run for their money. And I think that's something to, to bear in mind that while those are gonna be the easiest planes to fly, I think if you put the time, effort, and energy into this line, I think you can find yourself coming out on top, especially if you don't instantly factor in that it's a loss because you're going up against the meta plane. Well, and yeah, you you will run into a lot of specialized 1092s and 1101s, but I tend to think of it this way. Their base airspeed maneuverability and altitude performance is going to be less than your base on a Sabre. Um, mm -hmm. Their guns are better, obviously, and so they're specializing their planes to get a little bit more maneuverability and, and more airspeed and, and yada, yada, yada. But you've already got a, a better base metric for every single one of those stats. Um, yep. And so as long as you're, granted, they've got those 20 mils on there, as long as you're <clears throat> aware of them being in the zone, there's no reason that you can't take the steps to, um, you know, getting rid of them. When yep. I talked about the F6U being like an anti- um, an anti-heavy fighter, the F-86A is, is honestly, it's an anti-fighter fighter. Anything that's up in your altitude bracket that's a fighter, you're going to be able to outmaneuver. Um, and you might not be able to necessarily outspeed them, but you're going to be able to stay with them. Uh, they, they can't outspeed you, I guess is what I should say. Mm, you're going to be able to keep up. Yeah, MiG-15, uh, maybe a Swift might be able to get away from you, but a MiG-15, an 1101, um, things of that nature aren't going to be able to get away from you, and a Swift is going to take a little while to actually get away from you in, in a Sabre. And, and even yeah. though the 50 cals don't have a high crit chance, they're more of a fire chance, you can get that crit at, with enough volume that if you can isolate those targets, you can knock out an engine, a pilot, a wing, you find yourself getting that advantage. And as long as you can keep your guns on them and keep their guns off you you're going to find yourself winning a lot of those engagements especially if you're coming up from underneath or diving mm -hmm. down on top uh, we don't talk about this a lot but the human mind wants to think in two dimensions and when you introduce a this this third axis that your z axis people don't know how to necessarily handle it innately it's an acquired skill so if you can take advantage of that coming up from underneath or diving down on top of people one you're going to be getting a bigger target because you're going to get a wide cross section and two you can be able to get the jump on them and get those guns within that range we talked about so yeah there are a lot of planes uh like especially in this mustang line where uh, you can use that uh, climb rate and and that speed to counter a dogfight. You can uh, climb instead of turn, and they're going to struggle to keep their nose pointed at you because turning is one thing for them. That's no worries. But when you add the engine component into it, it's a different ball game. Yeah, good point. It, just slightly putting my nose up. Um, in, in one of the Mustangs P51H is a prime example putting my nose up a little bit and engaging the boost and you just kind of wave to whatever might be behind you especially a Spitfire or something like that like yeah you might have been behind me uh, but you're not going to be behind me for very long because I'm going to be pulling away and you don't have that momentum and you don't have that engine power to keep up yep alright so we, we hit it A to Z but um, I what I thought was nice about this uh, recording, guys, is it felt very much like uh, people aren't necessarily in the chat while we're like going through all this. But when we play just uh, casually, like on Flight Up Friday or just flying with Avalation, like these are the conversations we have maybe on one or two planes while we're waiting for a battle or picking an aircraft. Yeah. It's just I figured if we were going to do a showcase, it would be easier to... Um, 
just to kind of wrap like we normally do and just record it. So I, hopefully this format is what people are looking for and people enjoy it. I mean, it's a long recording, but I feel like some good information got put out and an opinion of three different people. Uh, granted, we like this line, <laughs> but yeah. um, be, we I think we gave it a good, honest review between the three of us and our opinions and how we approach the game. So... Final well, if thoughts. we like the line, then there's there's a reason why we like the line, and yeah. there's an approach that we have with the planes so that make us enjoy it. It's not just the nostalgia, although, like a lot of people, I went down this line because the Mustang's awesome looking, and, and I remember the history yeah. of it. But we enjoyed it because we did well in it, and we learned from you know what the strengths and the weaknesses of the, the airframes were and what we could do with it. And I think if we enjoy a line, we're able to... You know, talk about that and its impact and hopefully our perspective although some of our perspectives were right in line with each other um, our perspectives will allow people to say oh you know what I didn't think of using the plane in that or I didn't think of it from that perspective uh, right. and help help other people enjoy this line like we do yeah I definitely wish I had heard this recording when I started playing. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I can I can empathize with that one. Yeah, and it, for that, I highly recommend anybody watching this video that's struggling with this line to go check out a review on one of our channels. Or uh, Avalation just has a, a couple of mashups. You might be able to find some of these airframes. And of course, we we should be compiling all of our recordings for each one of these airframes you can see us using them but checking out how we've used the aircraft to six to our, to good success because typically we're we're, sh we're showcasing some of our better games and therefore the better tactics uh and what's worked for us so you can get some ideas so check out postal monkeys page linked in the description below as well as avalation from avalation industries uh and see what he's got available as well uh because there are some tactics that come with this line that are going to make it more enjoyable it's not going to be your typical you know yank and bang turn fighter it's something that's going to take a little bit more nuance skill and finesse in order to get to a good patience position. is a word i would use yes absolutely mm -hmm. all right with that said guys thanks for joining me for doing this recording uh hopefully uh it's a sign of things to come and we can do this again sometime yeah it was a lot of fun Absolutely. Yeah. You guys have a good have one. Have a good one. Later. I'm marching to the sun. I'm just like a soldier.